Hello and welcome to Geometry with Mr. Clausen. Today we are going to get started with BPP10, which is the glazing contractor worksheet. And if you don't know what a glazing contractor is, a glazing contractor is the specialist that is involved with um, installing the windows in your home and maybe is part of planning the window installations of your home. So for this assignment, we're going to do some relatively basic calculations again um, many of them are square footage but then we're going to relate those square footage calculations of window area to the square footage of your floor plan so generally when you're looking at um, windows and installing them in your home there's some things to take into consideration one is you want enough windows in your house so that you have natural sunlight and those type of things coming in um, but not so many windows that you're losing a lot of heat in the winter or, you know, allowing too much heat to come in during the summer. And so it, when you're looking at these windows, there's a few things to take into consideration. There's obviously the quality of the windows, you know, so one of the things I have here is, you know, if you have cheap single pane windows, they're less effective at um, this insulating value but if you have windows that maybe have two panes of glass which is most common or even three panes if you buy custom windows a lot of times when you spend more money on these you know you may get windows that have denser gases in between the glass panes like argon and krypton for example if you're going really expensive but generally if you're talking about triple pane krypton windows you know at least you can get superman out of your house um, but you're spending thousands of dollars to get these windows but the main thing we're going to be looking at today is how we calculate the area of those windows and the general target that you want to use. So the ratio that you want to use as far as area of window should be approximately 10% of the area of the house to give you that balance so that you get that natural sunlight, but you're also not excessively losing the desired amount of energy that you have in your home so for example during the summer you want to keep heat out and during the winter you want to keep heat in all right and so we'll look at that uh the example i have here is like let's say your home's 1205 square feet well that means that the about the amount of window area you should have is 120.5 square feet relatively straightforward calculation um, we'll review this numbering system again where, you know, five, zero, and three, six would indicate a window that's five feet wide by three feet, um, six inches tall and, uh, use that to kind of determine some of these, um, pieces of information and, you know, how to switch units and those type of things to make the calculations easier. So you'll see a brief rubric in the bottom. Um, I apologize that I have a date on there, but... I will make sure to announce the due date either in class or on Google Classroom. And these are the general point um, designations that you have. So I'm looking for some accuracy here. Just make sure you don't double count or forget to count a window because um, these errors will expand very quickly. Um, but this assignment is 10 points for this part and then 10 points for the relative percentage calculation based on the information that you do have. So it, it is a little bit separated in that way. So I'm going to go, I'm going to take this off here of this packet that I have. And what I have on the back is the list of windows of a house. And we're going to find each area and then divide that area by the total square footage of the house and write your final answer as a percent in the space provided. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to walk through the cabin one floor plan so that we can go and do this together and you can see what it is that I want you to do and then I will have you do cabin two on your own and that'll be the main part that you are graded upon so if we're looking at this um, one of the things that we want to be able to do here is calculate these window sizes so you know I'm gonna pick a part of the start from I'm gonna start from this door now this window is not labeled. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna label this window. And if that's the case for um, any window, make sure to clearly indicate that on your blueprint. If I recall correctly, uh, cabin two has all the windows identified. So if we're looking at this specific floor plan, all these windows are identified. So you won't have that specific calculation circumstance occur. But in this one, 
I'm going to go just take my ruler here, confirm the width for sure as four feet. And, you know, let's just go four zero and four zero. Let's keep the orientation the same as it is here. And we'll say four zero, four zero, because you technically fail permit over that. And we'll start there. So we have the window um, that is four feet by four feet. Uh, and that area is 16 feet square. And then that room I would describe as the, um, let's call it the entryway. And then just start working our way around the house. So dining room, three by five. And that'd be 15 feet square. And then three by five. That'll be 15 feet square again. This is your kitchen. And go around four by three. That's 12 feet square. That is also the kitchen. And then we have, let's see, we swing around to the door. We have another three foot by five foot. Uh, 15 foot square. I'm going to call this the living room. And we have another three foot by five foot. That again is going to give you 15 feet square. That's in the living room. And working our way around. Now we got a bedroom here. So this is four foot by four foot. And 16 feet square. This is a you know, bedroom. Call that bedroom one. Go down. And I'm just kind of following along uh, just one pathway here, just trying not to miss anything. So this will be three feet square. This is your bath. And then last but not least, you have one more bedroom window, four feet by four feet. 16 feet square in bedroom two. All right, so you have all this information here um, real quickly. So now how you calculate the total window area is pretty simple. You just take all these numbers and you add them up. So if we go and take a calculator you know, we can go and say 16 plus 15 plus 15 plus 12 plus 15 plus 15 plus 16 plus 3 plus 16. And I get 123 feet squared. I'm just going to do that math again. So that would be 46, 58, 88. 88 plus 32 would be 123. Okay, just checking that after my last video and just having some uh, a slight math error. So if you have your cabin one square footage from before, go ahead and use that um, calculation. If you forgot it, well, then just do that area addition postulate again. That's going to be pretty quick in this given instance. So, you know, this is 12.5 feet. I mean, we can do all of this really quickly. I mean, my hope is by this point that your ability to do square footage calculations is relatively well established, but that's 25 and three quarter. Oh, wait. Yeah, we'll say 25 and three quarter feet. And then let's go and split this apart for sure. make that as straight as possible all right so we have some basic areas this is probably a very similar division as I did last time so this gives you 16 and a half feet by 
by 12 point five feet and then this is let's see that's almost eight and a half we'll call that eight point five feet by eight point five feet perfect square And then the last square here is, we're going to say 16 and 3 quarter, so 16.75 feet by, oh, that's 10 and a quarter. And then we also have 6 by 2. So this chimney here is 12 square feet as uh, previously done on other exercise. Sorry. So this is two feet by six feet. You didn't see that measurement there. I apologize. And so again, we're just going to calculate this out real quickly. So let's go take our calculator 12.5 times 25.75. And that's going to give us 321.875 feet square. 16.5 times 12.5. That's going to give us 206.25 feet square. 8.5 times 8. Oh, 8.5 times 8.5. 72.25. Feet square, sixteen point seven five times ten point two five gives us a hundred seventy one point six eight seven five feet square, and then we have the twelve feet square here. So let's just add all these numbers up. So I'm going to clear all this out of my calculator real quick. So three twenty one point eight seven five plus seventy two point two five plus 206.25 um, plus 171.6875 plus 12. And I think that's close to what I had last time. Um, so we'll go um, 784 square feet um, in terms of that calculation. And I'm just going to kind of, that's almost 500 six seven yeah so that that's the right ballpark that we're looking for in terms of that number and how to do um, this calculation so let's do the house area here so 784 feet square is the area of the house the area of the windows is 123 so now to simply do this area calculation it's as simple as going 123 um, divided by 784 and what you'll see with this home is that now this is in decimal format. So if you want a percentage, you multiply it by 100. And this would be 15.7%. And to the tenth place, as far as the percentage goes, is, is fine by me. And one of the things that you'll, you'll notice with this is that this is a relatively high percentage. I would say, you know, you're aiming for 10, um, you know, if it's your main home of residence, I'm not sure what a typical glazing contractor would say, but I, I think anything above 13% is actually um, pretty large. Now, in this case, we're talking about your cabin. This is your second home, you know, something that you maybe would only have heated on the weekends and that type of thing. So maybe having additional window area isn't a big deal. And I mean, if you're trying to get a view, you know, those are cost benefit analyses that you're doing on your own. But in general, this is what I'm looking for you to do as part of this activity. Um, so go ahead and include all this for cabin one. And then for cabin two, I want you to go through this other floor plan. If you've already done the square footage calculation and you have that, that's one piece of information that you already have. And then it's just going through the windows in taking that area so this should be a relatively simple and straightforward calculation just make sure that you don't have um any errors double check it just because any error as you can see based on my rubric can cause a pretty significant 
um, sway in your calculation. So with that said, I hope that you got a basic understanding and how to do some of the basic calculations that a glazing contractor does. Maybe not the work that's involved with it once you're putting in the windows, but at least some of the basic calculations. And with that said, let's do some math.